Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just do this here. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to you on Facebook. Welcome to you on YouTube. And welcome to the late one on our beautiful 7th of the 2nd, February. Yes, we got rid of January. January where all the crazy things happened. But bless God. And uh, we're now in February on the countdown to march april may june july august and of course what we're talking about first we have uh valentine's day coming up so make sure you get it, your things in sorted uh mike how are you and uh ladies and gentlemen if you are here just um uh, what would i say is that you like share do not dislike if you dislike i'm gonna get you i'm gonna find you about the powers that be again mi5 cia on it and uh yeah and of course on youtube um let me hear your comments as well um as you can see the topic which i'm going to do today is about this wind well deportation uh, let's put it in context on deportation okay um so i like i love if you could um share this video normally i come on at 10 but i've got some other things to do so i said let me just come on i don't like to say jump on i said let me just come on a bit earlier tonight and to see if I could have some sort of um, discussion on this matter. My name is Silburn Sidiel, I'm the host of The Late One, part of the Silburn Show Network. And uh, for those who know me, um, yeah, that's what I do. And uh, try to come at things with a different angle. Um, and I would more like to say an apologetic voice, an apologetic voice. Um, don't really care that much what people um, think about my views <laughs> no, I do care but um, it doesn't really motivate me what what people really think I just like to share my perspective and my thoughts and I love that well what can I say it's an interesting year so far um, 2020 and uh, of recent days we have the corona, cor cor coronavirus which, which is going on Hong Kong impose quarantine rules on mainland china and uh what we have is a situation where now there's there are three three um virus or, or three cases in the uk um people are now actually throwing away um corona there um you know uh, maybe it's a joke or what but um i saw a video where the lady was throwing away all the corona bears because she actually said that's a part of the virus um but on a, on a serious note it's a serious matter and um, let's hope somehow that everything will work out okay because um, there's even a ship which is quarantined with people who are having um, infected with the coronavirus and um, that's very concerning. Um, we pray and hope that it doesn't really spread widely, um, you know, uh, you know, we, we don't want to spread widely and I don't know if sometimes you watch these zombie movies, I think the last zombie movies I watch is Will Smith with Legend when they're trying to somehow get the virus for this particular thing. They got the virus eventually, but the zombies were very adamant because uh, apparently Will Smith got the, one of them wife or girl and when he was using um, to test on. So we just hope for the best. And that's my thing in hope, hope for the best in regards to the coronavirus and let everything go on. Yeah. Second thing also, which was very interesting in the news today, Philip Schofield, anybody know Philip Schofield from one of the uh, mainstream um, GMTV show uh, came out and says now gay um, he has come out and um, and uh, and my question was why do people need to come out if they are gay or straight or whatever like that 27 years a gentleman has been married 27 years and I think it's a few years ago based on the interview that uh, he found out that he's gay 27 years right but why did he need to come out do you come out? Should we come out? When I say we, people come out. Whatever you are. Are you straight? Heterosexual? Do you need to come out? Well, I came out today and say I'm straight. <laughs> and uh, I think the point I was trying to emphasize is that you don't really need to come out. Why, why do people need to come out to say what their sexuality is? We don't need to know. 
I'm nobody need to know my sexuality, your sexuality. What do you think about that? What do you think? You need to come out. And uh, or is it like a fat? Somebody said maybe something is about to burst soon. So therefore he just came out. I don't know. But uh, the more I think about it, and what is very interesting, somebody said, somebody said something very interesting is that when a man married and cheat on his wife or whatever, he's a scum, he's a, he's a scoundry, he's the worst of mankind. And uh, someone said, uh, this gentleman, apparently have been cheating on his wife or, or if anything and he's been celebrated you know and um, applauded so what can i say society has changed completely now the next one is gail king is not doing well who is gail king gail king is not doing well that's what oprah says um because she's attacked for messing with kobe bryant legacy and oprah cries right um 50 cent LeBron James, uh, Snoop Dogg has come out and said, you know, let's shut her down or whatever like that. We're going to get her, apparently they said, saying that she's having uh, uh, death threats and all those sort of things. I don't know about that. But it is very interesting because with Gail King, if you recall, Gail King is the lady who spoke about um, Michael Jackson. She did the, expo well, Oprah Winfrey did the expose on Michael Jackson, um, you know, Bill Cosby and all these different persons, um, and uh, well, even, even R. Kelly uh, as well. So the, she's somewhat, they said, deemed as the, uh, what should I say? She's somewhat deemed as the an enemy, an enemy of the black race, as I would say. She's deemed as an enemy. But at the same time, is it journalism? Is it journalism that she's doing? Could be. I don't know. Is it journalism? And uh, so there's a lot of discussion going on in regards to what Gail King and Oprah Winfrey. But the interesting thing about Oprah Winfrey and Gail King is that they are good friends with Harvey Weinstein. And Harvey Weinstein, hi Trace, how are you doing? Harvey Weinstein is, as you know, a serial, um, you know, sex pest, if anything, you know. I, I, I will, um, you know, I can't prejudge someone because, of course, evidence and court, but that is what he's deemed to be. She doesn't do anything about that. Gail King, they don't advert, they don't they don't do any discussion on that. So therefore, what they go for the easy targets, Michael Jackson, persons when they are dead, if anything, and try to mess with their legacy. But at the same time, is it journalism? Is it good journalism? Is that what it is about? That's the question. Is it journalism? Is it that uh, people are very fickle? You know, I don't know. But I'm just I'm just thinking thinking out aloud, really. What do you say? Should Gail King get the, the attack what she's getting at present moment? I don't know. And sometimes, maybe I don't care, you know? So <clears throat> that's very interesting. But the most important thing, and which I believe that I, I need to say maybe something on, is this whole issue of the deportation to Jamaica. <clears throat> for those who know of some of the things which I've done and which I've followed, I think the last time when there was some deportation happening, I think with the Windrush pit and uh, so, uh, Jamaicans, what they did, they went to the Jamaica High Commission. And when they went to the Jamaica High Commission, they actually, according to them, that they were turned away and they were, um, you know, you know, police was calling upon Jamaicans at the Jamaica High Commission. So I did an interview with the High Commission, the present High Commission, to find out exactly what is happening. That is out there, that is on video. Yeah. Uh, Trace Humphrey said, no, that's not journalism. I work in television for years, so it's not journalism. Um, uh, Trace is talking about the interview with Gail King and uh, the, the lady um, who's a good friend of Kobe. Uh, the other question is, Gail King is actually saying that CBS actually cut it out a bit and it wasn't placed in context was that the case you know i'd love you to share this video at the same time while i'm talking about the the deportation and the immigration issues and the wind rush thing i'd love to hear a person's views i also like to hear uh, especially persons in jamaica because one of the things that they've been talking about and people have been talking about and it's been said for many years and i even asked the high commission this question was is the jamaican government getting any money as a result of persons being deported to Jamaica. Is there any money which they are getting, right? 
So that would put a spin on the whole thing and it would be good understanding. This, this let, let me break it into context now, is that December 11th, um, apparently there is supposed to be a, a plane deporting Jamaicans to Jamaica. Jamaicans. There's a question to be asked at the same time is, are they really Jamaicans? You know? And that is what has been one of the factors regarding the Windrush. Are they Jamaicans? How long have they been from Jamaica? Have they got ties in Jamaica? Um, what is the law? Now, I tend not to like to comment on these things, uh, or maybe from an emotional level at the early stage, I tend to like to find out a bit more information and a bit more facts. And normally that comes in a bit late. Um, I'm not the type that demonstrate, but just because I don't demonstrate, that doesn't mean to say I'm not doing things on the background. I like to be more of a strategic person at the same time and like to ask questions and come in and try to unravel uh, what is happening. I, 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 I have a couple of lawyer friends who are immigration specialists and uh, one of the questions I, I put out to them was, is the deportation plane on the 11th of January going ahead? That's one of the questions which I ask. Is it true that there are persons from the Windrush on pro, 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 uh, pro, projected to be on a plane, people from the Windrush, and one needs to sort of distinguish Windrush at the same time. Are they prone to be deported? What is the prime minister or the government position in regards to this? And also what is the law, right? There are many different factors take to play in, the, in this whole thing. But if I, if I actually just read a, a couple of things, Jamaican deportation, they say up to 50 people are due to be deported on Tuesday in what will be the second immigration removal charter flight to Jamaica since the Guardian exposed the scandal of the wrongful deportation of Commonwealth citizens from the Caribbean in 2018. MPs, support services for uh, migrants and activists have criticized the flight, pointing out that it is taking place before the publication of the long delayed Windrush lessons learned. You see, what is happening after the Windrush, and I'm not going to go into the details of, of the scandal regarding the Windrush. Many people know about it, and it's all documentary. Just Google it. Um, one of the things they say is that there's a, a report, a review, which should come out talking about lessons learned from the Windrush, right? And uh, for persons there. And, and it was deemed that there was not going to be any more or maybe that i don't know if it was a promise that there was not going to be any more flights but i believe what they said is that they will um hold flights or it is requested to hold flights until this review is out i don't know if you are watching but last night there was a bbc report that it has been leaked a copy of the review and it recommended that the government concert ending the deportation of foreign born offenders who came to the UK as children, right? And what seems to be happening, and this is it, I don't think, and David Lammy in the in the program, fair, rightfully, when he was asked, where's the line that you draw? Should persons be deported if they're criminals, if they come to the UK? Um, um, say, for instance, persons from Jamaica come um, five years ago, six years ago or so, four, five, three years ago, and um, even if they have a visitor's visa or leave to remain um, limited and they rape and they manslaughter, they murder or they kill or they lie, whatever, whatever, something gross to a certain extent. Should these persons be deported? And I think what David Lamy was saying, yes, I believe those persons should be deported if they have served their time and they need to go. What seems to be the contentious issue is that the persons who came when they were very young five years, three years of age, two years of age, weren't born in the UK, but but um, are part of this country because of their parents. Parents could have been from Windrush or not even from the Windrush, but based on the fact that they came and they from an early age. And also persons who were born. We're not like the United States of America, whereby when someone is born in the United States of America, they're automatically uh, uh, an American citizen. 
in the UK, just because you're born in the UK, that doesn't make you automatically a British subject or a British citizen. It all depends on the status of your parents. And that's the issue. So what they're talking about is that there need to be some sort of line because if somebody's here in this country, and I think this is actually fair, four years of age, five years of age, culturalized, going through the school system and everything like that, and caught up into some wrongdoing, maybe, uh, uh, well, rape is a very serious one, and um, manslaughter, you know, serious one, and these sort of things. But, you know, sometimes people get caught up just because of a simple ticket, right, on the train, you know. <laughs> I mean, they're trying to decriminalize persons now from TV license as well, because it was deemed as a criminal offense, even council tax. Right. Once it's a criminal charge, you know, then one will be taken to court and then one will look and say, who is this person? Oh, this person has no status. Right. This person is not a British person. This person is um, limited leave to remain or, or indefinite leave to remain or maybe have no status. Because what happened in the Windrush sector is that person did not regularize themselves. That's also one of the factors there. Yeah. So so therefore, so those persons is understand whereby they've been culturalized in the UK, they have been um, grown up in the UK, and they have been groomed in the UK in crime. So therefore, it is deemed that these persons, after they serve their term, should not really be deported if they have a family life. They have a right to family life, Human Rights Act, even though right now we're talking about with the Brexit gone, they're talking about getting rid of the Human Rights Act and maybe a Bill of Rights, if anything, because what the government is trying to do is ensure that they can kick out terrorists. But then by virtue of such, then others are going to fall into that trap. So I can see where the demonstrators are wanting to come to an understanding of what this is about. David Lamy, as you know, told the program, I think it's extraordinary that it is to be even happening. And he said, there's a young man who was about to deport it who did two months for GBH, grievous bodily harm. And the young man I spoke to was groomed. He was groomed into selling drugs. He got 15 months for selling. He was let out in 2015. And 2015, he said, and is about to be deported in 2020. He said, we stopped deporting criminals to Australia in 1868. Why have we started doing it through the back door this way? Earlier British officials said that the counterpart is in Jamaica, continue to insist that all those set for removal are criminals and that no Windrush victims are involved. However, the Guardian understand that other recommendations in the room may include a broadening of who counts as a Windrush victim. And this is the thing now because Fair enough. People use words, branding, to actually um, bring sort of um, things to the forefront. So what has been used a lot is Windrush. Is a Windrush person. They're, they're, they're sending back Windrush persons. What what the lawyer said to me is that he said, Silver, if you have a program, you need to you need to bring this out to say there need to be a distinction to distinguish between who are Windrush and who are persons who simply commit a crime. Who are Windrush or who simply commit a crime, right? And that is something that needs to distinguish. And what they are talking about here is that there are recommendations in the review may include a broadening of who counts as Windrush victims. And that's it. So in a way, one can understand the rationale behind holding, yeah, holding the, um, the deportation until this comes out. Because what's the sense of next thing you deport persons and then the recommendations come out where there's a widening and a rede redefinition of the windrush and then that some of these persons maybe are are qualified to be in this new dispensation or whatever like that so i can see the rationale there i do can see the rationale there um dan a king said need to reform the colonial laws that govern um let me see what she actually say need to reform the, the the laws um there's a there's a there's a lot of laws that they refer um are you still burnt no that's not doing them need to reform the colonial laws that govern okay right um dan king um i think you dropped off saying something i guess you're saying need to reform the colonial laws that govern the british legal system or whatever in in this particular area so 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 this is what um the, the essence of the demonstration is about i wasn't there yesterday in um downing street um but i know a few persons who were there right right 
when when and and for those who don't know please share this please share this and and, and this is this is a good bit um what is the windrush deportation crisis right and they're talking about this report is currently undergoing they're even talking about things like what they're talking about they're talking about things like how the compensation scheme is going on so there's there are a lot of issues in in regard to that but enforce departures right i know of persons who at present are, are signing on uh because even here for years and 20 years i know somebody who's here for 20 something years and um haven't got their thing the papers get lost and I can see some classic cases where when Boris Johnson before was talking about when he was mayor and, I, and we're going to see if he's going to follow this through and you know whether it happened or not but follow it through the the whole aspect of an amnesty uh, for for persons who have been illegal for a long time because I believe there, there's a scope for that but the key thing at this moment is those 50 persons who are set to be deported who are they? Who are they? And secondly, on what grounds are they there for deportation? And um, what is what are what are their crimes? Did they serve their crimes? Serve their time? Um, do they have families? Do they have children? Are they able to care for their children? Because what we don't want again is this. What we don't want is, and you'll all agree with me, totally agree with me. I'm a child care family lawyer. And um, one of the things you see is fatherless children, even in the care system, when you have fathers, you find, but, you know, what we don't want is fatherless children. What we don't want is fatherless black boys, fatherless black girls, if anything. The majority of persons who are going to be deported for Jamaica, then 90% or 99% of them are black. Yeah. And more than likely, they'll have children. We don't know what the age range of them. And trust me, I don't believe that we're going to know all of this information because of GDPR and they're not going to disclose. That person don't want their things to be disclosed as well. So I think the issue is now going to be the government and what Boris Johnson said. This is what the government said in question time. An MP, Labour MP asked the question, will the Prime Minister halt this process until things are regularised and they sort this out? And he said that I believe that the British people will be happy or, or will not object to criminals being deported. The persons who are um, who commit crimes to be deported, and there are mixed views in regards to that. I've seen mixed views in regards to that. Some people say they need to go. Some people say no, they shouldn't go. Some people are saying um, if they commit a crime and they serve the time, why not they rehabilitate themselves back into the country where they've been living for years? Some are saying, but well, why should they stay here if they uh, if they commit a crime? What do you say? What do you say? Tell me on YouTube and Instagram. Do you believe that persons after committing a crime, should they remain in this country or should they be deported to their land, their origin land? Um, and I, I, let's, let's, use, let's use an example. Okay, I came to this country in 1992 as a young man of 20 years. <laughs> um, uh, that was just not just people to calculate my age. So I was a young man coming from, um, you know, from Jamaica, yeah, young man. And um, okay, I've got my citizenship now, so I'm dual status. I've got British and Jamaican. Uh, before that happened, before that happened, before I got my British citizenship, and I was on um, student visas for a while, then um, indefinite leave. If I committed a crime, should I be deported? If I rob and steal, should I be deported? Right? Answer that question. Should I be deported? I came here in 1992 as a young man of 21 years of age, three, four years into it, um, even though I'm at law, I was at law school still. Um, and of course, you know, if anything happened, you'll be barred from uh, practicing because you're a criminal. Yeah. Should I be deported if I rob, um, rape, or um, beat up someone, GBH? Answer this question. Should I be deported? Okay, and the next question is this, that is one scenario. If I came to this country at the age of five and going through the school system and um, going through the whole process and at the age of 21 or 30, I did the same thing whereby I, 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 I commit a crime or maybe 21 commit a crime by GBH or rob, I was hungry and rob someone um, Mark you, I grew up through the system. 
should I be deported? Should I be deported? Or should I say, no, I served my time of two years in prison. I should not be deported because this is a country which I grew up in. Five years, you know, at, at the age of five, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, that is where you're going to be culturalizing. They always talk about that age range, right? Should I be deported or should I be assimilated back and rehabilitated back into the system? These are some of the distinctions that need to be taken place. But then it is to know, it is to know the facts, right? Tuffy Hussain of Duncan Lewis Solicitor said, vulnerable detainees have been languishing in detention with limited or no access to phones for weeks, effectively being prevented from stopping removal. It is almost farcical that the Home Office has confirmed that they'll supply working sims only after being taken to court. We still have major concern that even if detainees have access today, it will be too late for detainees with imminent removal. So the question now again is, do they have access? Do they have access to legal advice? Do they have access and have been fair trial? Bell Sankey of Detention Actions, which issued a legal challenge against Home Office because of the phone network problems, said an 11th hour issuing of SIM cards may not be sufficient for those seeking to challenge their removal on Tuesday's flight, not to mention the impact on those that have been removed while signal has been down. A decision from the High Court is not expected on the application for permission to seek a judicial review of the phone problem. So what we're talking about, hi, law enforcement, good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, I would appreciate if you just press share and I love to appreciate uh, your comment and your views as well. Just press share to this video, yeah. Um, so they're talking about judicial review on these, um, what, what should I say, the, these, uh, this, this, this SIM card, phone problem. Why that is so crucial and why that is so important is because, um, Justice delayed is justice denied. This is not a maxim in law. Justice delayed, justice denied. Because these persons need enough time to be able to get access to legal advice. To get access to legal advice, they need communication. And that communication can be prevented because of the fact that they cannot have communication. So therefore, it seems like maybe the GVS4 or whatever the government is frustrating the whole process of bam, they go on the plane and go, right? And then at the same time, it is understood because someone, someone in, uh, and I'm going to find, I'm going to find this now. Someone, actually, it's my sister in Jamaica, actually, uh, in, in, in a WhatsApp group, messaged me and, and, and I'm going to say, say what, what was said. Um, they said, this is, this is something which is going around in Jamaica, um, some posts which is going around in Jamaica. And, and what is said is this. There are reports out of the UK that the government of Jamaica has collected £55,000 sterling for each of the deportees to be returned. Another question, has the homeless government been paid to accept Jamaicans being illegally deported from the UK? Has homeless sold out their rights? Now, what they said, illegally deported from Jamaica. The question is, are they illegally deported from the UK? Will they be illegally deported from the UK? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I put it to you that I do not have the facts. Right? I do not have the facts. And I don't know if you have the facts. So I'm looking at this now from an analytical point of view and just looking at um, the ways how this can be done, dealt with. But I think one of the strongest ways of this how this can be dealt with, ladies and gentlemen, is simply by persons recognizing that one needs to also behave yourself. But let's not go there. That's that's another thing about one behaving themselves. Yeah. All right. So opponents of the charter flight continue to campaign for it to be cancelled. Right. Bell Rubir Addy, Shadow Immigration Minister, said she would be attending a demonstration against the charter deportation flight that was last night. We are very concerned. These brutal deportation charter flights have been restarted before the Windrush Lessons Learn Review has been published. We don't want it to be in a situation where we find out what we have deported the wrong people. And I do agree with that. And the Prime Minister said we do not comment on leaked documents, right? But if this leaked document is eminent to be released and to be published soon, well, what's the big deal in maybe 
holding it back. But then at the same time, one needs to look at the, the different uh, uh, demarcation and distinction as to who should be deported now. Right? She was concerned about whether everyone was due to be deported should really be classified as serious criminals. The Prime Minister assured us that they're all serious criminals. But looking into their cases, we're not sure that they are. Before deporting scores of people, we want to be absolutely sure. Now, who is the onus on to make it absolutely sure? Who is the onus upon to ensure that these persons are serious? How do you distinguish what is a serious criminal or not? See, these are all the questions which is coming up. But then I have to ask this question. Why every time these things happen, it's like it's happening all over again? There should be a distinction by now as to what is a serious criminal. What do you say? What do you say is a serious criminal? Who is a serious criminal? Is that the person that burgled your house? And stole some of the expensive stuff that you have, you know, stole um, stole your your tie pins, stole um, your, your phone, stole your car keys. Are they dangerous because of the fact that they put your life in fear of safety? They scared you. You almost have a heart attack. You wake up in the morning and you see this thing gone, and you wonder, oh my days, that's been dangerous. They didn't hurt you, but what distinguished serious? Is it the person who is a dangerous person? One who actually rape, right? I don't think there's any question about that. As a serious person, someone who, um, for manslaughter. Well then manslaughter, one can be convicted of manslaughter, but that doesn't mean to say that um, they, you know, there was some, there are defenses. Well, anyway, they're convicted, they're convicted, but they're def defenses for manslaughter, if anything. But if they're convicted, they're convicted. That means to say they fail on the point of the, of the defense points, right? So what you say, we want to be absolutely sure. Home Office spokesperson said, the plan, and this is what the government said, Home Office spokesperson, the plan charter flight to Jamaica is specifically for removing foreign criminals. Those detained for removal include people convicted of manslaughter, rape, violent crime, and dealing class A drugs. Okay, so therefore, this is what we have now. Anthony, what are you? You said what? This is it now. This is what the government classify as serious criminals, right? Consider serious criminals, those detained for, yeah, Removing for those detained for removal include convicted of manslaughter, rape, what? violent crime, and dealing with class A drugs. That's what they say, dealing with class A drugs. So therefore, we have that. Manslaughter, rape, violent crime, and dealing with class A drugs. Now we got it. Can we say that's, that's it there, right? Right? So... It's, it's interesting days, and I believe there need to be, uh, what should I say, there need to be a, a breakthrough that, um, let me see, I'm just trying to do something here because something uh, something just happened a while ago. Let's see if I can do it. Okay, hope you can hear me clearly. If you can hear me clearly, let me know, yeah. Good. This is the bit that needs to be completely resolved. ASAP. So there's a seventh and, and uh, by, by the 11th, which would be Tuesday, and I'm in court that day, Tuesday the 11th, that plane is going, right? And it's all of this discussion regarding, even in Jamaica, they're talking about, they're talking about this prison. They're talking about that people also have um, died, was going back to Jamaica after being deported, people going back with no family to go back to. I always say this, I always say this. How can you come from Jamaica and don't have any families to go back to? Or no friends or so, if anything. Sorry, I always, always, this is just me on a, on a side note. I always believe that we should never burn our bridges to the point that we cannot go back to Jamaica. You know, um, we shouldn't burn our bridges, no matter what, no matter what, right? Um, I'm looking at some um, some different views from the demonstration and what they said. It 
it emerged that thousands of long-term UK residents were denied access to services, held in detention or removed despite legally in the country for decades. There have been no mass deportation to Jamaican since, but Boris Johnson has signaled a return to the policy following his landslide election win. Right. Now, so you can see also the political element which is coming through here. And, and, and what I understand is that this was already booked in place, you know, before election and all those sort of things. 50 Caribbean nationals forced out of the country on a charter deportation flight scheduled for Tuesday. Because this article is actually from the, the Metro. You can see the tone of it. And what it said, protesters shut down Whitehall over racist Jamaica deportation plan. All right? Jacqueline McKenzie, she's a lawyer. She said, the message was very clear tonight. Lawyers and campaigners and family members gathered at Downing Street to denounce the mass deportation of Jamaican people on charter flights before the Windrush Lessons Review is published. Discriminatory nationality law repeal. So what I can picture from this and what I can gather, and I guess everybody can gather this, is no one is actually disputing in a sense that persons there may need to be deported or they may be criminal element or whatever but what they're talking about is hold this off until we understand the lessons from the wind rush because persons could be reclassified as wind rush citizens or wind rush persons and that is what they're actually saying i think that is fair i think that is fair and uh let me hear what um what what uh, what other persons are actually saying just to get some sort of uh, uh, uh feedback i i think that i think that is fair lorna foster says many came to the uk as children so legally they are british subjects i don't believe all are criminals however i think racism is somehow festering many came to the uk um many came to the uk as children so legally they are british subject no lorna just because you came to the uk as a child that doesn't mean to say you're a legally British subject. I mentioned today that even though you're born in the UK, that doesn't make you a British subject. You have to got to go through the process. Um, UK is different from America. In America, when you're born in America, you're legally an American. In the UK, just because you're born in the UK doesn't make you a British subject or a British citizen because it is dependent upon your parents and their status. And as well, what is also, and, and therefore, and I believe one of the things that also caught out some of the persons from the um, Windrush period is that they did not actually um, follow procedures in a way and get things going. Because at the same time, what I understand from persons from the Windrush and, and persons which I speak to is that they said the majority of the persons from the Windrush period are okay and have no problem. They actually followed the procedures at a time and they regularized themselves and they got their stuff regularized because the goalposts came moving, the goalposts kept moving, and it kept moving. Even now, persons who are actually applying to get their their citizenship or even passport, the goalposts keep moving, Go, moving by, based on bylaws, based on regulations, and also by the costs, because the costs keep going up as much as possible. Diane King saying, colonial divide and rulings full spring with double standards of neo-colonial color blindness and postcode of intellectual war with financial strings attached mobilize and centralize or perish a clear message from uk to jamaica that the problem is theirs to resolve plus the government vexed that cameron prison building scheme was not welcomed by the diaspora masses well that's another view so many persons have their different perspective as to as to what is really happening many came to you okay lorna foster said some have no living relatives or parents in jamaica so how are they going to be taken care of they will they will be left to their own devices i still say this and i still say this. How can you come from Jamaica and don't have any relatives there? I don't understand that. That's just me. I could be wrong, but how can someone born in Jamaica, grew up in Jamaica, and have no relatives in Jamaica? So where are the relatives? Come on, we're Africans, man. You know, where are the relatives? Are all of them gone back to the UK or are they gone to Africa, Ghana, Nigeria? Come on, Africans is a big family thing, man. Everybody in Jamaica have families, man. Or conveniently, people don't have any families for the purpose of immigration to stay in the UK. Sorry, I'm just putting this one out there. I'm just throwing that one out there. Because as far as I'm concerned, 
every small of Jamaica must have relatives and family. You might not engage with them, you might not know them, you might not um, have a good relationship with them, you might have burned your bridges or something like that, but every smuddy in a Jamaica must have relatives. If, you know, you, you can tell me if that's the case. You can tell me what, what you think about that. That's just my maybe biased perspective. Um, I have no evidence to support it really. Maybe I'm talking out of my nose. But it's just that if you're born in Jamaica and you're a black person and you're from descendants of slaves um, or Africans and you're saying that in Jamaica you have nobody, I do question that. So anyway, so I'm not gonna tarry, well, I'm not gonna tarry too long on, on, on this on this topic, but I think I've we've come to a sort of crescendo where I can understand the rationale of the demonstration. I can understand the rationale of waiting to until you, there's this review document coming to play and then one can sort of see where we're at because the the windrush bit and as i said to persons even though the majority of the windrush persons or person came on the boat and their families are okay even if it is one that had the injustice it was one too much right and in and and going back again and let, let me go back further and, and see what uh, Lady Miranda Grail said, Incredible Zeta Holborn, Joint Chair of Barack, encourage the families of all those affected to come forward and let their voices heard. And that is it. Persons who have families there, I think that is always going to happen. To, you know, and even the High Commission, I don't always say this, I always deal with the facts. You know, I always deal with the facts here. If there are 50 persons who are going on the plane, and if those 50 persons can actually be identified, by some source or like Barrett there, and even with the High Commission, and they do a good tally. How long you been here, right? What's the crime that you were sentenced for? Blah, blah, blah. And then one can have a clear understanding. I don't think that's difficult, right? Antje talks about the appalling impact on herself and her two young children. Boris Johnson is resuming deportation flights to Jamaica next to leave on 11th. A lot of these people have lived in the UK since childhood. Show up to oppose the cruelty details. Facts, facts, facts. Get some facts. We need some facts. How many of them have been here from youth? Are they are they like me who came here at the age of 21 and did something? Or they have been here from the age of five and they did something bad, right? Facts, facts, facts. Have they got families? I've got the children. Facts, facts, facts. That what, that's what we are talking about, yeah? Maurice McCloset, important demo outside down the street this evening against the deportation of 50 people to Jamaica next week. Protesters shut down Whitehall and chanted, stop the charter flights. We have human rights. Okay? The campaign group said they were concerned that some being deported are very vulnerable and have not been adequately assessed. I'm going to say this again, Lorna. I believe that every single Jamaican and family back a yard, right? Even if they deport, even if they, 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 they migrated, but they still have family back a yard. Go and do one of those tests by those guys that check out their genealogy. They'll find families. I, I did a person with a genealogy the other day and found out a massive little family. Even found out, no, I, I know that I'm related to Bob Marley, but the actual the genealogist was actually linking it. Zidel, Zidel, um, um, Zidela Booker, you know, um, Bob Marley's mother with my grandmother and stuff like that. It's wide. Every smuddy have a family back home. Trust me. Do a thing. But I know people's persons some that don't want to touch onto that subject because they want to say that they don't have no families back in the yard. You know what I'm saying? And maybe we call them burn the bridges. That's just my view. Maybe it's a biased view, but every smuddy in Jamaica have smuddy a yard, right? Don Butler said one of her North London constituents would be on the flight despite wrongly being convicted under the now unlawful joint enterprise rule and being released two months later. Another Whitton said it's been two years since the Windrush scandal expose the wrongly detention and deportation of Commonwealth citizens. While we wait for the publication of the Lessons Learned Review, the government plans to deport 50 people. 50 people to Jamaica by chartered flight next week. Will the Prime Minister immediately suspend the flight until the Lessons Learned Review is published and the recommendation implemented? Boris Johnson replied by saying it was right. This is what he, that's what he said in Parliament. It was right to send back foreign national offenders. What I will do, what I do, as 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 a, I will check with James Cleverly. I'll check through the party source as, as a conservative to see if I can get some sort of another perspective as to what what is happening, 
right? And 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 see it unfold. But th those are my views, and I just wanted to to sort of bring this up and and just give a, a, a perspective. I, I understand in principle, and I can see the justification for holding back the flight until things have been sorted. Um, it, it, it'd be good to find out when the review will come out. If there's been a leaked document, that means to say it's almost ready to be released. And if there's it to be released, might as well just hold on to it for a few bit, a tad bit, and then eventually to actually um, see how it looks. And at the same time, what I'll say for persons who have families who are involved, who involve and are part of it, to let them disclose it to the powers that be who are the activists. And then they can marry it and tick it and to see how it's happening there. Okay? That's that's how I that's how I see it. And 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 then then we then we take it from there, ladies and gentlemen, and um, see if we can come to some sort of resolution. But for those in Jamaica, and it's deals in Jamaica, I, as I said, what I what I as I said, for those in Jamaica, this is what you should do for those in Jamaica. Do what um I said earlier, check with the Jamaican government. Check with your government if this is true. And this is what it is. They said government in Jamaica, and this has been said many times when I was interviewed by a commissioner, I did ask a question and they said, no, 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 that's not happening. But it always keep coming up back. Hi, Trevor, how are you? There are reports out of the UK that the government of Jamaica has collected 55,000 pounds sterling for each of the deportees to be returned. Ask Andrew Honest that. Ask the government of Jamaica if that's the case. If you're a PNP, ask the PNP government at the same time when they were Minister of National Security if that was the case. Because deportation has been going on for youngs, from God they're born, from God was a boy and in cocky clothes. Check that out. Has the wholeness government been paid to accept Jamaicans being illegally deported from the UK? Has wholeness sold out their rights? This applies also to the previous administration. Have this been happening? Or is it just conspiracy theory? That's a question need to be asked, you know. And on that note, I'll you know share this video and um, um, let people know. And uh, just want to bring some sort of uh, what should I say, perspective, yeah, perspective. You know, speaking my my, my Jamaican, um, what should I say, uh, twang is twanging me up. <laughs> you know, check this out as well. Okay, so so ladies and gentlemen, that's my view and that's my perspective. Keeping it very simple in regards to this thing which is happening in Jamaica. And um, on this positive note, and I think I think I need to leave on a positive note, actually, as a matter of fact. Let's leave on a positive note. Right? And, and my positive note is this. Listen to this music and chill for a second. I always like to talk on a positive note. I always like to leave on something positive, right? You see, with the whole thing with Philip Schofield um, coming out as gay and everybody is actually celebrating him or whatever like that. I was watching on BBC today, this family in Syria, mother and her children while the husband is somewhere else and the missiles kept going after them trying to kill them trying to kill them trying to kill them everywhere they go trying to kill them and it, and it just shows how sometimes things that the media focus on dwarf you know certain key fundamental things which are happening in the world right that mother and her children was trying to flee from the the um the bombs and everything like that which is going after them don't care one who, all they care about is survival. Survival of the fitness. Survival. And that is crucial. And, and in this life, I believe that everything places into perspective as to survival of the fitness. You know? And then I was thinking about um, people, you know, always wanting to change their position. Changing their position, whether it is financially, 
whether it is your living situation, whether it is your education situation, wanting to change that position or change the situation, you know, to change it, one has got to change. And there's always a saying, you cannot keep doing the same thing and expecting another result. You keep getting the same result. So therefore, one has got to change one thinking, one action, change the mindset as well, which is crucial. One cannot stay, as I always say, on the safety of the shores to understand the depths. One has got to move away from the safety of the shores and go into the deep. As I always say, deep call it on the deep. And it's always sometimes like one of my favorite mantras. It's something which I see all the while. You know, be the change that you want to see. And be the change that you want to see. You've got to go into the deep and go into the sea. Right? I'm speaking to me and I'm speaking to you. On another note, on a positive note, to leave on a Friday evening. To be the change you want to see, you got to go into the deep, go into the sea, get out of the comfort zone, get out of the safety of the sand. My sister will not like what I say now, which I always say, she never liked to swim, and she always wait until the water come up on the sand. Yeah? <laughs> Claudia, if she sees me. But she waits until the water comes up on the sand, and she jumps on it. Yeah? My father would take up her uh, on his hand and take her into the deep and she'd go, ah, you know. And that's what happened. People cry when they go into the deep. It's uncomfortable. I'm scared. I'm scared. But then when you go into the deep and you start to swim, you see the beauty of the under, deep into the sea. And that, is, that talks about circumstances, changing your position, financial position, education, or whatever. Like, you've got to do something different and you've got to do something which makes you uncomfortable totally uncomfortable all right and sometimes things that happen in life is providence yeah it's providence providence is whereby the hand of god where things happen and you have no control over it but if one applies himself and take advantage of that moment and seize the day you'll see change and it make a big fundamental difference in your life and in my life. And when I speak, I'm speaking for myself. Trust me or not, you know, I'm not perfect. And we challenge each other. So I hope that blessed you, you know, and I hope that you have a good day. Have a good Friday and uh, Friday evening. And for those in Jamaica, all the best. For those in the States, all the best. Thank you very much. And remember to um, share this video and to like, subscribe. Um, to my show and ladies and gentlemen there's going to be something exciting coming up because myself and my guys what we're going to be doing we're going to be creating some other shows um taking the la taking the late one out right out and we'll see what that means so thank you sharon and this is trevor ted john <laughs> virgin you can't john man you must learn to swim and you know you must learn to swim ladies and gentlemen you see, before you actually get into the sea, at the same time, when I say you go into the deep or the deep, you've got to actually learn to swim. Don't follow my cousin who said drown. <laughs> Peace out. Interesting topic. Though it makes feelings. Yes. I'm here to challenge thinking. I'm here, you know, I'm not going to say things that are peaceful, but I, I challenge person. And I say it again. Every Jamaican on this earth must have family back a yard. Right? Even if I'm in the grave, you know? Um, Ted, bless you. David, bless you. Lorna, bless you. Diane King, thank you. Patricia Warmington, um, Anthony Ward, Dutty Virgin, where I say Lorna, Darren Lewis, respect, respect, respect. Have a good night and all the best. Please. Um, YouTube, thank you very much for coming on and uh, bless you. Thank you.